Welcome to week two of patch 9.1 and week one of Shadowlands season two. Today's video is going to act as your master checklist of things to do, and I've got some neat updates for you. I'm going to kick it off, of course, with what is new this week, the season two content and the big things you got to know. Now, patrons, a big thank you to you guys. And by the way, if you'd like our weekly podcast with a fresh lore walking episode coming too, as well as loot and publications like the master to do doc um, that pairs with today's video and our big Corthia written up guide, then hit up our Patreon. We're doing it more and more there with every week and the join link is down below. Okay, let's get started with what changes this week. Shadowlands season two starts this week. This will mean that the new raid will open on normal and heroic mode, with Mythic Plus dungeons now being scaled up to their Season 2 item levels and numbers, and also getting their new seasonal affix. And of course, it's also the beginning of the new PvP season. Additionally, we are going to unlock Flying from our Covenant campaign this week, as well as a new NPC in Corthia who sells one or two useful items. Torghast Layer 10 is also going to unlock for players who have achieved a 4-gem run on Layer 9, which is the one that opened last week. Now, you'll earn three more Renown levels this week, taking you to Renown Level 45 and earning you some rewards. At Renown Level 33, you will get a Soulbind upgrade and you'll unlock Rank 5 Unranked PvP upgrades. This is enough to take the Shadowlands Season 2 Honor gear all the way up to item level 203. But remember, it will boost up to item level 216 in PvP because of the new PvP gearing system. Rank 44 then unlocks the next part of the campaign and a companion. And then with rank 45, which of course you will learn from doing the campaign, you will unlock your Covenant Flying Mount and Flight in the original Covenant Zones, as well as a Soul Bind upgrade. Additionally, for changes then, Blizzard have fixed up parts of Corthia to make it a lot better. You can now loot chests in combat, and the chests will stick around for longer after players interact with them. And this cuts out many of the zone's extreme launch frustrations. So that's very good indeed. For the Dungeoners, Tazavesh opens this week. It's an 8-boss mega dungeon that drops eye level 226 loot on its regular mythic difficulty. There's also an optional hard mode that drops item level 233 gear, though activating that is a little more involved. We'll have a link to a guide down below. Now, while the gear from this can't compete with, say, the highest keys from a dungeon, clearing both modes is 16 shots at pretty damn solid loot though the hard mode really will be hard early on. Now, for Mythic Plus people, and you know, for your Valor points, your main goal, of course, is to get one, four, and ten Mythic Dungeon clears done at as high a key as is possible in order to get the most from the Great Vault. Now, while week two is not a dungeon week in terms of the game's holiday system, do keep an eye out for the next dungeon week because the Dungeon Week quest will drop item level 239 Sanctum of Domination loot. And remember, your Mythic Plus dungeon runs count toward that quest now. As for Valor, it should be earned until the cap, but it should not be spent in my opinion. Only spend Valor on gear with a high starting item level that you intend to carry for the whole season. You know, maybe if you get your base trinket. And with a cap that starts at 750 and increases by 750 each week, you really won't have trouble filling Valor points. For Raiders then, it is simple. Clear Sanctum of Domination, three, six, or nine bosses. Get as much as you can. And that's not just for the standard gear drops, but it's also for earning Stygian Embers. Stygian Embers are the Shard of Domination upgrade currency. Now, if you kill nine bosses, that will be enough to fill your weekly vault. And do remember that the domination gear can drop from the Great Vault, which does make it a pretty high priority. Now, if your guild can clear those final two bosses, even on, say, normal, that will be handy because it will unlock the final two bosses' uh, loot from the Great Vault. And that's loot that is, uh, you know, item levels higher, right? So do that. 
Now also, do keep an eye out for the time walking event. It's not up on week two, but when it is, it will have some catch up ish raidy gear, but it will also earn you a bit of Sanctum of Domination normal gear, which is item level 226. PvP. Well, for the PvPers, cap your weekly conquest by doing arena, RBGs, and the weekly Orbos PvP quests. Honestly, cap is not that hard to hit. Next, you want to think about getting 1250, 2500, or 6250 honor earned from doing rated PvP. So just doing lots of RBGs and arena. Doing this, of course, is what will unlock more slots in the Great Vault. And that is great, because if an ideal bit of PvP gear comes from the Great Vault, well, that's pretty handy, because in your conquest, points can go into buying another bit of gear. Now, doing this earlier on in the season really is ideal, as more people will be queuing, including loads of fresh PvE players, and there will be less boosting going on. So, you'll be a little bit more ahead of the curve, and it'll be easier to push raiding earlier on. Next, ensure that you do your weekly PvP quests from strategist Zorak in Orbos. Here's a table of all possible quests that he can give you, and these are all an easy way to earn honor, anima, and some conquest. And speaking of conquest, if Against Overwhelming Odds is active for your faction, then flick on War Mode, get a few honor kills, and you'll earn an easy 500 anima and 200 conquest. Now, if you don't plan to push rating, then of course, think about doing your first win of the day each day um, of the different PvP activities. Doing so will actually have you conquest capping in a few days. As you can see, capping conquest is really quite easy, even without entering arena. For Torghast and Legendaries then, you want to cap on Soul Cinders this week. To do this, you have to complete both active wings of Torghast, ideally on layer 10. You've got to do the bi-weekly Covenant Assaults. You've got to do the Tormentors of Torghast event weekly. And then also check your Covenant mission table for Soul Cinders and Ash. Also, Soul Ash can now be grinded. So perhaps you are gunning to recraft your second or your third legendary on a different slot. And the new Soul Ash drop rates, of course, don't cover that well earlier on. Well, additional Torghast runs will yield Soul Ash. It just won't be that much of it, but it is something you can grind. Now this week, we will hit Renown level 44, and this will unlock the quest that unlocks Bonesmith Hyremir in Corthia. Now he sells packaged Soul Ash for 300 Soul Ash. It's a bind on account item that can be redeemed for 250 Soul Ash. So if you've got multiple alts, you could actually use this to funnel the ash that they earn from there to, uh, you know, high Torghast runs in the week, over to your main. Okay, now time for some quick daily and weekly checklists, and then I'll have some very handy resources for you. Daily stuff then. Three Corthia daily quests, doing your Corthia rares and treasures, your rounds of those. Also, you'll get 100 deaths advanced reputation and 75 soul ash for each different tormentor of Torghast that you kill, which actually rewards you beyond doing the single weekly kill that is the most useful. For the mall, if you need Stygia for Corthia catch-up gear or the Shard of Domination unsocketing item, then of course do your Maw rares, Venari quests, and Venari dailies. This will net you loads of reputation, and once you max out with Venari, you'll be able to get the Paragon boxes, which of course do contain that very cool horse mount. Also for your daily things, world quest clearing. Seriously, could be useful here. Clear out the world quests that drop conduits if those conduits are an upgrade. Because if you can get those upgrades before you spend any of your rather hard to get conduit upgrade items, then, uh, well, you'll save a bunch of time and effort. So definitely do that. For weekly things then, outside of the obvious for the instance content, be sure to do the latest Covenant campaign step, which will get you renowned rank 45 flying and a flying mount the Shaping Fate quest, which earns you many rewards and renown, the Tormentors of Torghast event for extra soul cinders. These happen, by the way, on the hour every two hours. Then your two bi-weekly Covenant assaults for, uh, for reputation and soul cinders, the Desmodron or Desmodarian, whatever the hell it's called, world boss for item level 233 gear, of course, that's located in the Maw, as well as from that world boss, new conduits, and a shard of domination. 
Then consider the Wrath of the Jailer and Beast Warrens events from uh, 9.0. Uh, these will get you Stygia, I level 200 catch-up gear, Venari reputation, so they could help you get a bit up to speed, but they're not really useful for the Bleeding Edge player. Okay, with that said, I'm going to leave you with some very useful resources. Okay, so we've linked a bunch of useful resources in the video this time. For Corthia, we recommend using Tomcat's add-on suite, Handy Notes Shadowlands, and Silver Dragon Rare Scanner, which is really useful for not missing stuff. Additionally, there are some useful weak auras. First, here's a real-time updating list of things to do in Corthia. Second, here's one that reminds you to re-summon your Gromit with, uh, you know, within Corthia and the Maw, and also reminds you whenever it finds treasure for you. And finally, here's one that displays the value of all catalog research in your bags. Additionally, with it being the season start, you should check out these Sanctum of Domination Week Auras. Uh, Look, these things are awesome, they're really useful, our guild will be using them for our runs, and I'm sure they're going to help you too. And I'm also sure they'll be, the, you know, they'll be similar for the likes of Tazavesh at its hard mode if you want to do some digging on them wago, which is a great place to find your weak ores. Okay, there you go, that is our Season 2 Week 1 guide, just to help get you all up to speed and everything you could possibly need to know. If you'd like to support the people who, uh, you know, made today's video, you can check out our Patreon, where we've got some neat publications, including one on Corthia. We've also got um, kind of like a proper write-up version of this that could be very useful for sharing around, um, as well as our podcasts. We've also got loot. There's also the daily briefing, which will keep you up to date with game industry news. Really, there's a lot going on, so... Uh, Patreon's a pretty sweet place. All right, that's it for me. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy Shadowlands Season 2, and good luck making your way to Sylvanas. It's going to be a pretty fun week, and have a good one. See you later.